What's up everyone, Lion Lord here, and today we are going to be reviewing the Studio Series Rise of the Beasts 100 Action Figure Bumblebee. And so earlier today I was at Walmart and I uh, was looking through the Transformers um, figures and I saw this guy in the way back of these uh, Studio Series ones. And I got so excited because you cannot find this guy anywhere. And if, if you can find him on, like, Amazon and stuff, he's just so overpriced. I got him for, like, uh, $20, $24. So, <clears throat> yeah, let's get straight into re review. First thing I noticed about this figure in real life, this, like, chest piece right here is so much more, like, smaller, like, compact than, like, on the camera. Like, in reviews and stuff I've watched, like, it just looks so wide, but, like, in person, it looks so much more accurate and just, like, so much more nicer. So, um, yeah, so first, a few, just a few complaints I have is definitely the paint. I know, um, on my copy, it's the newer version, so he has, like, the more, uh, painted, uh, face. But, like, if they ever, um, remake this figure, the one thing they gotta, uh, redo is the paint, because... The yellow's fine, the gray's fine, but, like, this, uh, the arms on the side, this should be, like, um, silver, so it should, like, this. And then there's some hollow spaces in him. As you can see, like, along the arm, that's a little bit annoying. There is some in the legs. Where is it? Like, right here, you can see. There's some hollowness there. But besides that, I, th I personally think he's the best Bumblebee Studio Series mold that we actually have. Like, this guy is so amazing. He's really accurate. The transformation is simple. And the vehicle mode looks just as good as um, this mode. But yeah, that's definitely like the only real complaints I have. Another one would be for like the... The glass, especially I'll uh, touch more on this in vehicle mode. I really wish that was just straight black. I wish that for every um, single Studio Series figure. I think some of them have it, but not all of them have it. So, you know, they just got to do that more in the future. And that's pretty much all the complaints I have, really. You know, besides that, a few en engineering details I will hit on in vehicle mode. So for articulation, what we have is uh, his head. It could look up, it could look down, it could rotate 360 degrees. Um, side to side, eh, a little, not not a lot though. And then for um, the shoulders, got that far, in that far. Rotate this, and then for them um, the biceps, you have bicep swivel. And then it could go um, a little bit past ninety degrees, and there's no wrist rotation, which I guess makes sense. Most Studio Series Bumblebees don't have that, and then um, I guess these could kind of count as joints. Not really. I mean, you can't pose them, so. Mm -hmm. And then for the legs, you kind of have like a double ball joint here. So it can go like uh, side to side like that. It can kick uh, a tiny bit past 90 degrees. And that is um like a pretty firm kick. Due to the backpack, he can't kick out as far. But I guess he wanted to kind of... Uh, manipulate that and you could kick almost to 90 but yeah and then for um the knee um, bending it can go I'd say that's about 90 degrees and then there's this no forward which makes sense you know but it's not really a joint unless you're like double jointed and then for um the feet you have side to side to a really good extent no um forward and backwards which is no it's okay you know because he's a studio series is that's good so um now let's get some comparisons 
All right, so the first comparison we have is the Studio Series Bumblebee over here next to the Yellow Park Bumblebee. And now, of course, this one's going to be more accurate because he can't transform. I actually would recommend this figure a lot, especially since he's so cheap. But yeah, there are definitely a lot of similarities. We have um, Rise of the Beast Bumblebee against Transformers 49 Deluxe Class Bumblebee. Now, this Bumblebee figure is actually really good considering the paint. He's very, like, pa good painted head to toe. There's a few problems, but I think he is one of the most accurate besides um, him. Next, we have him against Studio Series uh, Rise of the Beast RC. Uh, now, this scale isn't actually accurate. I think she would be about to, like, his knee or something. I forget. But, you know... I wish they could make, like, a smaller version of her. That would be so much more better, especially if it's uh, in scale with the other ones, especially, like, Optimus Prime, which I don't have. But, um, yeah, that's it for comparisons. All right, now let's get into the accessories. So, first up, we have the Stinger Blaster. I think that's what this is called. So, um, just clip that into his arm, and then, uh... There you have it. No, I re really wish this was painted as well. Maybe at least just silver coating would make it so much more better. But, you know, at least it's not, like, all yellow. And then next, we have the Stinger Sword. Now, I'm really disappointed in this. Like, they really couldn't have done anything, anything to make the blade any type of gray or silver. Like, come on. So, you just put that onto his arm. And then, boom, Bumblebee is fully equipped uh, and ready for battle. Alright, now let's get into transformation. So, first, if you have these on, just take them off and set them to the side because you will actually put them back on later. Okay, so for transformation, what I like to do first is just bring these tilt them like outward so they look kind of like that and then what you're going to want to do is come to the back and lift these pieces up like so and they should look something like that and what you're going to do is kind of rotate this foot so it's almost like that and then rotate this part uh, so it's uh, straight and then you're gonna do the th same thing to this side push that foot in rotate this and then this part could be tricky just kind of collapse on um, that foot in there we go all right then you have basically his entire um, back part of the vehicle mode complete. The next, what I'd recommend doing is coming over here, just flipping out that backpack, and then, then coming back over here. This part could, there you go. It could be a little difficult at first, and then you're just gonna kinda uh, bring this front part forward. Then at this point, what you're gonna wanna do is there's two tabs on the back. There's one, down here and then one up here. I'd recommend doing this one first. Otherwise, if you do this one first, these ones will almost be impossible to get in. So, just get that there. And push that in and boom, you have the entire back part. And so then what you're gonna wanna do is bring this part forward. And once it's in there, you're gonna wanna these the headlights lights straight then bring it forward and that's kind of the front part and i guess for this if you wanted to you could do a scene where he's like uh pulling onto the cliff while it's like half transformed i don't know and then uh you could just snap that there bring these door pieces in like that and then for a few finishing touches, make sure his head is forward. 
just bring these in. Rotate them like that. And then you're gonna wanna um, close these wheels. Like that. And then time for the final part is closing that in. And then what I said, like, for what you'll need these for later is the stinger sword is going to go into this tab right here. So just put that in place. And then the blaster, it's kind of weird. I, I wouldn't put this on if I was displaying it in uh, vehicle mode. But you kind of just snap it onto the back here. Which, yeah, I don't really know what that. Then here we have them in car mode. All right, so that's going to wrap up the review. Um, and if you guys would like to see any other uh, review videos, I will see you guys later.